It's amazing to see how we as a community have survived and recovered from floods over these years. And to see how flood protection has become essential in protecting a lot of our communities who call home along the mighty Mississippi. Meteorologist Kevin Phelps shows us how science and technology has evolved over the years, especially when it comes to measuring river levels. Living in the QCA, we're no strangers to hearing flood stages and river levels, but have you ever stopped to think how are those actually measured and why it's not exactly what you think? I headed over to Lock and Dam 15, got the lowdown on how we measure the river and how those flood stages are set. Didn't move my trailer because I thought it was set up a foot above 65 and that was supposed to have been the mother of all floods and uh, it wasn't. <laughs> Knowing the river levels at certain points along the Mississippi is crucial for city responses and preparedness, whether it's for rises or drops. So as you can imagine, it's constantly being monitored. Each lock and dam has a well. There's one on the upstream side of the dam that's the pool. There's one on the downstream side of the dam that's called the tailwater. And there's separate systems that measure um, the water levels upstream and downstream of the dam. The river is measured in a couple different ways, one involving pressure. So this is a what we call a submersible pressure sensor. This is fixed down into the water and it, it just senses um, how much water is above it and is able to track how that water level changes over time. The other option includes what is essentially a tape measure. So this is more of a mechanical sensor that we have. So you actually put a measuring tape on here and it has little pins, you can see, so the tape has holes that it's held on there. So if the river's moving quickly, the tape will stay on the wheel. There's a, um, a weight and a float on here, a counterweight and a float. So when the water level goes up and down, up and down, it spins this wheel and then changes the reading on this digital readout. Now the height measurements aren't exactly what you think. The sensors are at all fixed points or depth, meaning the river is likely deeper than the, quote, height, unquote, you see on river level maps. Now, the stages that you see published on websites and that are mentioned, um, those are really arbitrary numbers. They don't give you an idea of how deep the water is or what the elevation of the water is. Um, they're just arbitrary numbers that are linked back to a real world elevation using what is called a gauge zero, which is um, unique to each site. Flood stages are all set based on each river level location and local impacts at certain predetermined levels. It really went away. By May 25th, the Mississippi had risen to the ninth highest crest on record, nearly four feet above flood stage. And then came June, the wettest one on record, over a foot of rain in 30 days. As you can imagine, in the last 30 years, uh, there's been much more data available to us with measurements essentially taken every minute. But the overall way we measure the river hasn't really changed a whole lot. I'd say the big changes is how the data is gathered. Um, it's collected via satellite much more frequently than it was in 93. There, are, there were a number of gauges added, especially throughout Iowa. After the 93 flood, I think the number of gauges doubled or quadrupled just because the support from the state and other local agencies was there. And we're still using a lot of those gauges today. Each gauge has multiple redundancies put in, including someone coming in, checking every couple hours and reporting the measurement, just like the old days. But the biggest lesson from 1993 was communication between all the offices that monitor the river levels. You can see the flood coming from, you know, before it gets there, basically, like it was in 93. I would say um, another thing that's really improved is just the cooperation amongst the agencies. So we maintain gauges, the United States Geological Survey maintains gauges, and we're able to share that through that satellite collection system. Uh, it's a really nice system and everybody gets the data at the same time, all the water level management decision makers. River levels are monitored year round. That does include even during the winter when we see a lot of ice chunks flowing down the Mississippi. Now that does take some extra maintenance. Those wells where we take our measurements are actually warmed by a heat lamp so we don't see things ice over and that allows us to continue to get those measurements essentially every minute 365 days a year. I'm meteorologist Kevin Phelps for KWQC First Alert Weather. Since 1993, many improvements have been made to prevent flooding in some areas, possibly at the risk of more flooding to places downstream. And in the Quad Cities, there's only been one crest higher than the 22.63 feet of 1993. 
And that was the all-time record crest in 2019 of 22.7 feet. The 1993 flood beat the previous record from 1965, a record that stood for 28 years. It took 26 years for the crest of 1993 to be topped. Those of us with river interests would be happy to wait much longer than that for the next great flood on the Mississippi River, be it from heavy rain or snow melt. Of course, only Mother Nature knows when the next record crest will occur. For Teresa Bryant, I'm Eric Maitland. Thank you for joining us.